Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and this is the all new 2025 M5 iPad Pro and this is the 13 inch variant. There's an 11 inch and 13 inch just like last year and this comes in at $1299, goes up to $2599 depending on the configuration, whether or not you have a nano texture display, Wi-Fi and cellular. If we spin this around here, you can see the specs are, this is the 13 inch Wi-Fi and cellular M5, and this has a one terabyte with the nano texture display. So let's go ahead and pull this off here as well as the top one. We'll flip it over here and let's take a look at what's inside. So here we go. We'll open it up. We also have the keyboard for it as well. I currently have the black keyboard, but we'll check compatibility with the M4. So inside, it's what you would expect. Of course, here's the iPad itself. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. And then of course, we've got our typical paperwork, no Apple stickers or anything like that. But if we take this out here, it says iPad Pro. It's a quick start guide. We've got our polishing cloth included, and then just basically something about cleaning the display. So inside we have the typical 20 watt Apple charger that's included in the box. And then we have a USB-C to USB-C cable that's braided and this one is black. So you can see that here. Basically the standard things we've had for a few years. Let's set this aside and take a closer look at the iPad itself. Now this does come in space black and silver. This is the space black version. Let's go ahead and take the cover off it. And it's basically the exact same as last year. So all of the things are pretty much the same. We have our camera, our LiDAR sensor, along with a flash. Then of course, on the right hand side, we've got our volume buttons. And then on the top, we've got power sleep wake, or it could be the left hand side, depending on how you're holding it. We've got quad speakers with a microphone in the middle. So on the other side, we've got our extra speakers here, then USB-C. So you can see how incredibly thin this is. And compared to the M4, let's take a look. So side by side, the M4 is on the left, M5 on the right, and you can see they're basically identical in every way. So not really any difference, maybe slightly darker this year with the space black, but basically the exact same, same thickness. It, from the outside, you really can't tell other than that there's no iPad Pro on the new one. So for whatever reason, they didn't label it iPad Pro. I would love to see it say M5 iPad Pro or 2025, just to differentiate that a little bit, but they haven't done that this year. So let's go ahead and turn it on for the first time. So we'll press and hold the power sleep wake button. Wait for it to turn on here. There we go. And internally we have the new M5 of course, and this has a much better neural processor and GPU. So there's been enhancements there, but this has the M5 chipset with that 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU. And this model is the 16 gig of Ram model because it's a one terabyte. If you choose the one terabyte or two terabyte options, you get 16 gigs of Ram. If you have the other options, you get 12 gigs of Ram this year. Let's go ahead and get this set up. So I'll bring in the other iPad, see if we can get it set up here. United States. We'll select our appearance. We'll just choose default for now. And then it pops up on this iPad right away. So we'll go ahead and select. I'll verify with face ID. And now we have to center this here. So we'll center it on the iPad. It connects and gets things ready. So we'll give it a second to connect here and continue on the iPad. So it says, who are you signing into the iPad? I'm signing in myself. We have to enter the passcode from the other iPad to this iPad. And immediately it says there's a software update. So we can update now or later. So we'll go ahead and update and then we'll wait for it to complete. So it says, enjoy your new iPad. Then you have to start all over again. So we have to hit agree and then wait for it to download and install. So we'll wait for that and then we'll come back when it's done. I updated the software, so let's go ahead and tap continue after I reset it up and let's scan face ID here. So we can rotate the iPad here as it says then we'll tap get started. And just like any other iPad, basically you just center your face, move your face around, and then it scans and you're good to go. We'll tap continue. We'll do it one more time. And that's it, scan is complete. So then we'll continue. Now we can transfer directly from iPad to iPad and because we have Thunderbolt, this should be a lot faster. So it says transfer in about an hour, but I have a Thunderbolt 5 cable here. So let's go ahead and plug this into the bottom. We'll plug it into the new iPad here. There we go. It barely reaches, but you can see it's plugged in. And 
let's transfer from one iPad to the next. So it should be pretty quick since we have that Thunderbolt cable connected, but let's tap continue. We'll allow location services and we'll set up Apple intelligence. We'll choose notifications to summarize. I'll turn on everything and then we'll have priority notifications as well. We also have Siri. We'll tap continue and tap continue again. And we'll set this up later. And then it says, do you want to continue with the beta program? And yes, I do with this one. So we'll tap continue. And you'll see this one has beta four on it. So now I have to update again. So it's a bit of a pain if you're running betas. I actually forgot I was running a beta on this one. So let's get that updated as well. Now it finished updating on its own and now it's transferring from one iPad to the other. It says about three minutes remaining before it said an hour or now about five minutes, but we'll give it about five minutes, let it continue transferring. And then of course we'll come back when it's set up. The transfer completed. So we'll go ahead and unplug the cable here and we'll be able to transfer the cellular data plan in just a moment, but let's go ahead and tap done. We'll slide up and it should be identical in every way. So we'll go ahead and put in my password restore completed. It took about 10 minutes, not five minutes, but it transferred relatively quickly. We'll tap agree and it's signing into my iCloud account. I'm not sure why it didn't do that before since we synced that, but maybe something to do with the beta being on here. But again, we'll give it just a moment here to complete signing in. Now it's asking me if I want to set up Siri, we'll go ahead and tap continue tap continue again. And it says, welcome to iPad. I'm familiar with all of this here with iPad OS 26. And now it says, welcome, get started. So now we're at the home screen. It's going to install some apps in the background still, but you'll see everything's identical from side to side. Now it did not set up my cellular plan. So let's go ahead and get that set up within settings. If we go to cellular data, transfer iPad plan, now it says you can transfer your cellular plan to this one from the iPad pro 13 inch M4. So we'll do that. We'll go ahead and transfer. We'll have to confirm it on this device. So we'll go ahead and tap transfer over here. Tap okay. And it should transfer on its own. So we'll give it just a moment here to complete. We'll double click and confirm. And now it's transferring. So you can see in real time what this looks like and we'll give it a second. It should drop off of cellular here and then add it over here. Just like you're transferring an eSIM on an iPhone, it should work the same way. So you can see things filling in here. It's taking just a second. It's activating. We'll give it a moment. Like I said, Now it's complete. And one thing to mention with this is it has the C one X modem. It's 50% faster than cellular data performance on the old one. So this is Apple's new modem. And we also have the N one networking chip, which includes Wi-Fi seven, Bluetooth six and thread. We'll tap done. And now we're all set up. Now we don't have any new wallpaper or anything like that. And you'll see everything's ready to go. If we swipe over here, you can see my notes for different things and everything's set up exactly the same. So, all of the apps are laid out the same with the exception of iMovie keynote numbers and pages and GarageBand. They added those, but basically everything's the same here. So let's go ahead and see how it compares as far as speed. Now we do have the same display, but the new iPad supports 120 Hertz out with 4k displays or 60 Hertz with 6k displays. So maybe we'll have a studio display with 120 Hertz soon, or maybe a pro display XDR. The battery is exactly the same, the same 10 hours and pretty much everything else is the same here. So let's see how it compares as far as overall speed. So we do have benchmarks on here. So let's see if we can find that first. So we'll go into Geekbench here. So let's go into Geekbench six. We'll take a look here. Give it just a second. It loaded on both. You'll see that we have 16 gigs of Ram on both. And of course the new M five. So we'll go ahead and go into CPU benchmark and we'll run the benchmark and see what we get. While we're waiting for this to finish, let's go ahead and take a look at the heat as this one feels a little bit warmer with the M five. It's not much of a difference. I don't think, but let's take a look at the thermal camera is it definitely feels a little bit warmer on the M five compared to the M four. So with the heat signature on the back of the M five iPad pro, you'll see we're at about well down here at about 33.2 degrees Celsius on the M four you'll see it's at about 29.8 degrees Celsius. So not a huge difference, but definitely a difference overall as far as the overall heat signature. 
and benchmarks completed. And you can see we have 4,104 for single core compared to 3,769. We have 16,455 compared to 15,106. So pretty nice little jump there with the M5. If we go back and take a look at the GPU benchmarks, let's take a look at those as well. And with the GPU benchmarks, you'll see it again completed 74,395 compared to 55,352. Now let's take a look at the AI benchmarks as well, since we have Geekbench AI here and give it just a second to load. There we go. And let's go ahead and run that. And you'll see the overall scores are a little bit higher on the M5 as we do have neural accelerators, but 5,284 compared to 4,933. Then again, the half precision score at 8,524 compared to 8,031, and then 6,782 compared to 6,429. So definitely faster in every benchmark as you would expect. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what AI can do using the neural processor. So let's go ahead and go into image playground. We'll tap continue here. You can see I don't use it that much, but let's create something, the exact same thing that's on device. We have the exact same thing, a convertible car next to a beach house. Let's go ahead and tap OK here and let's see how fast they create it. It's already done here on the M5, slightly faster, but not much of a difference there. But you can see it was a little bit faster. This is what it generated. We'll try it one more time. So we have the same thing again. Let's go ahead and tap the check mark here, see how fast it is. And there you go. Again, slightly faster as you would expect this year with the M5. I have a video I filmed on an iPhone and edited on the iPad Pro M4, and I thought we'd try and export it. I just copied it into the Files app and then opened it in Final Cut Pro. So you can see it here, it's active on both, and it's a video I never published. So let's go back and we'll go ahead and share it and see how long it takes to actually share this video. So it's a 4K60 timeline in 4K. You'll see we'll share here share and we'll bring in my iPhone to start as far as the timer. And you can see here 4k, it's exactly the same on all of them. So let's go ahead and tap export. We'll tap start and let's see how long it actually takes on both devices. I would not expect it to be much different here though. So it was a little bit surprising there. The new M5 iPad Pro came in at six minutes and 26 seconds, where the M4 was seven minutes and 38 seconds. Now the M5 iPad Pro does have a two times faster SSD when it comes to read and write speeds, according to Apple. So maybe that was the difference there as the encoders and decoders should be very similar on both devices. But either way, it's a little bit faster here. Next, let's take a look at Transcriptionist. This is an application that transcribes audio into transcripts and will utilize the processor. So this was actually used by Steven Robles in his video, and I thought it was a great way to use that. So let's go ahead and see what it takes here. We want it at normal speed and we want to transcribe. So let's go ahead and do that and tap start and see how long it takes. So it says transcribing, and usually it's pretty quick on a Mac. There we go, you'll see it's transcribing already. And this is my video iPhone 17 Pro Max review, the good and the bad. So it's transcribing here and it's moving along pretty quickly on the iPad Pro M5. And now it's done at about 19 seconds where it's about 22 seconds on the M4. So definitely a little bit faster here. Next, let's take a look at the Magic Keyboard. So here's the previous one I was using. It does show some wear around the aluminum or aluminum, and you can see it here where it just shows a lot of smudges. It does work well, but it picks up a lot of fingerprints and it will work just fine with this iPad. So it picks up your oil from your fingers. So you'll see I can use it with this one, but I did wanna use maybe the white one with it instead and see how that holds up after about a year and a half. You can see some fraying here down at the bottom. So it's holding up well, but it's not perfect. Now the bad thing about this keyboard is it's $349. So it's fairly heavy, but it does protect the iPad well. You'll see the price here. So I picked it up from the Apple store. And by the way, I purchased all of these. None of these were sent to me. I bought them with my own money. So it's not sponsored or anything like that. So let's open this up. We'll take a look here. Again, very heavy, but let's open it up. And since Apple updated this, I have not seen the new one. So again, we'll open it up here. And inside, it looks like we do have a little bit of paperwork, maybe warranty information. That's about it. 
and here's the keyboard itself. So definitely nice and bright. It's white as far as the keys go, shouldn't show as many smudges and has this silver look to it. Now, I don't know that it will go as well with the space black version, but you'll see it just goes on like this, of course, attaches magnetically just like the other one, but gives it a little bit different look. So I think it clashes nicely or goes nicely rather with the white and then space black, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like. Of course, we have the Apple Pencil Pro as well. We'll attach that and you can see there it's attached and ready to go. So now we can use it just like we always could before, and you'll see it works just fine. So we can use the keyboard. We can use, of course, all the new keys to turn the brightness up or down and volume and everything else. So it's great to have this keyboard. For me, this is a must buy for the iPad Pro, especially if you're going to use it for video editing or watching video or anything else. I think it's a great case overall and everything else is the same. We still have the charging pass through here. And of course we can plug in here for Thunderbolt or whatever we'd like. Now, if you're wondering if you should buy the new M5 iPad Pro, I would say that really depends on what you currently have. If you have the same generation last year, the M4, and maybe you just had the glossy display and you want to try the nano texture, it's actually something I prefer as far as the display goes. I prefer this over glossy. I use it in this light environment, studio environment. I just think it looks better for how I use it, but not everyone will love it, but maybe you want to try it this year. You can definitely do that. But if you're on a previous M4 iPad Pro, it's really hard to just spending this much money to upgrade. It is a nice upgrade, but it's very incremental this year, unless you're doing something specific like video editing. We noticed a little bit of a gain there due to the faster SSD. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of reasons to upgrade this year. So for most people, I would say don't do it. But if you have a previous iPad, maybe an M1 or something along those lines, it would be a nice update, especially if you had one of the older style ones as well. You'll definitely notice a difference with the overall smoothness and things with iOS or iPad OS and everything's just fluid and fast with this newer design. So it's definitely recommended, just not for those who are on the M4. Otherwise, I think it's great either way. One other thing I wanted to share with you is the overall thickness compared to the new iPhone Air. So side by side, if we take a look, you can see they're about the same. So that gives you an idea if you're looking at an iPhone Air or maybe the iPad Pro, or you didn't have either one, this gives you an idea of thickness. They're about the exact same, slight differences there, but very, very similar. So it's great to see that. Of course, with the camera plateau and the camera bump, they're a little bit different there. So that's everything for the new M5 iPad Pro. Basically the same thing with a two times faster SSD, a spec bump as far as the M5, and of course the new N1 and C1X modems. So those are great to have in here, as well as the 120 hertz external monitor support. It's a nice update, but not really something you should run out and get if you're on an M4. I think it's a great device. It's one of my favorite devices, and I'll be using it full time when I'm not editing videos. This is what I typically use. Let me know what you think of the new M5 iPad Pro in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.